Hello everyone and welcome back. So today we're going to talk about serverless web application. So let's say that you have um, a Lambda and you want to have it exposed to some kind of HTML JavaScript that you, you want to put the website on and call the Lambda. So we're going to use the API gateway to do that. So let's say that this is the architecture we want to have this deployed. So we have a user that's going to call some uh, HTML and JavaScript. This is going to be hosted in the AWS S3. And then this JavaScript is going to call Amazon API Gateway. And this API Gateway is going to be the bridge to actually talk to your Lambda. So you have to implement your Lambda and then expect the input from a GET or a POST uh, from your JavaScript and then process this input do some kind of logic and return it and then the JavaScript in your HTML will handle the, the response and then display it in the HTML page. So the technology that we're going to use is first of all let's do everything in Terraform so let's not use the AWS console because uh, if you want to deploy like different environments and uh, it's going to be a pain to use AWS console to replicate all those changes so Terraform is a very nice automated deployment technology that you can use so we're gonna do everything in Terraform and then of course we're gonna have to create our Lambda to handle the post and get request from our HTML JavaScript and we're gonna implement that in Golang uh, we're gonna set the API gateway to process a get and post request and bypass those information into your Lambda the static not very static because we're gonna have JavaScript in there but your static hosting will be in S3 and this is where it's going to be your HTML and JavaScript and of course we're going to use the HTML JavaScript to do the front end to the user so I created here a POC for API Gateway uh, I have my source folder I created just a empty HTML that I'm going to show you soon and uh, my lambda.go so let's start with the lambda uh, first thing you need to do is because we're expecting a request from API Gateway there is a nice uh, struct or uh, API from AWS that's your request when you're using the API Gateway proxy so let's use that object that makes our life easier so you're gonna use that as a request input so so first thing let's just uh, log some of those properties in, inside the request so inside the request we have the HTTP method we have the body in case if it's a post and we have a query string in case if it's a get let's just log everything now let's assume that we're gonna have a first name and last name as the input for both cases of get and post so let's create those variables and in case it's a get, we're gonna re uh, read it from the query string parameters. And in case it's a post, we can just read it from the body. But to read it from the body, the way we're gonna send it is just a JSON string. So you're gonna have to unmarshal it into a JSON first. So to do that, let's just create a struct that's going to handle the first name and last name. Okay, so this is a simple struct with first name and last name. That's the parameters we're expecting. Now let's create an instance of this struct and then unmarshal it from the request body. And now I can read the first name and last name. And of course, I forgot to import the request for the API gateway. So here they are, the Lambda one and the events for the request. Now that I have read my first name and last name, let's create the response. Let's just do a message saying hello from Lambda. And then let's put the name as a concatenation between first name and last name. So we're not going to do any business logic here. It's up to you to whatever you need to do it later. So now let's just return the response. So because this will be an HTTP response, we need to return exactly what the HTTP is expecting. So we need to set the headers, the body, and the code. 
So there is a struct already for uh, based on your events and we can use that you don't have to create a new one. So this is the events from AWS which is the API gateway proxy response we just need to set the body or whatever uh, return you want in our case will be a JSON and then the status code will be 200 and we need to define some headers so there is the problem is when we're using the API gateway we're hosting the HTML and JavaScript in a different location as where the Lambda is so we need to define some headers in order to bypass the course which is the cross something CORS cross origin request sharing and to do that you need to add these headers here saying that we're gonna allow origin from anywhere and the methods allowed will be post and get and I also added the option in here and also I'm adding the content type in my information here so this is very important otherwise if you do it your your JavaScript you're just gonna receive an error from your course which is the security uh, inside your browser and we're gonna use that in the browser because we're using HTML and JavaScript so this is my response so my body is basically this message here which there's nothing special about it and then the header is the one that has to be taken care of so lambda is pretty simple it just needs a little trick here and there in order to make sure it works so it's very important to set the headers and it's very important to, to use these objects here to read the different cases when it's a get and a post so let's try to compile this lambda and see if it works So same in the way we used before, let's just compile it. I'm putting the object in my target folder and uh, this is the lambda.go that I just created. Okay, sounds good, compilation, no issues. Let's now just create the HTML page. So going back to the HTML page, so this is an empty HTML that I have created before. So basically it's just the first name and last name as we were expecting from our uh, inside our Lambda. I created both parameters in here. And then I create two buttons, one to send the GET request and one to send the POST request. So this will call uh, this uh, JavaScript. So let's just create those JavaScript functions. Okay, send the GET request would be very easy. Let's just uh, clear the response. So I have the response here, which is my uh, text area. Then I'm going to put the response. So I'm going to keep it blank for now. So in case there is some uh, previous data. So I'm going to call another method that I'm going to create, which is the HTTP GET. So basically it will be the API URL. I'm going to call it. And then I'm going to add the parameter for first name. And I'm going to read it from here. And then I'm going to do the another parameter called the last name and I'm going to read it from this other input. So let's create the HTTP GET now. Okay, let's just uh, log the URL that we're using just for debug purpose and we're going to use the HTML HTTP sorry XML HTTP request we're going to open a new GET with this URL and then we're going to send the data and there's no data to send because this is just a GET request and then on load we're going to process the response and to process the response let's just update the text area at the end with whatever we received so let's log it if it's 200 we just log whatever the response is and then we're going to update our internal text area response ID and then we're gonna put the JSON that we received in there so the thing I'm doing here I'm just parsing the request response that comes from the Lambda and then I'm just making it a little bit more beautiful with two spaces to separate and uh, align them okay so now let's do the post 
So for the post it's a little bit more complicated so we need to get so same thing we need to clear the response and then this is the data that we're gonna send so I'm gonna construct this object in here which is gonna be my first name and last name and this is uh, an object and then uh, I'm converting it to a string before I'm sending the data I'm uh, logging everything that, I, that I'm pay, uh, posting so the URL and the data that I'm passing uh, and then um, just create the same object HTML HTTP request and then I open a post with that URL and then uh, on my on load I'm gonna process the request same way I process the get I'm just calling the same method and then I'm sending the data and this should be everything that I need to do for my HTML page so now let's go to the Terraform and create the Terraform to deploy all the components that we need and then we can test this so this is my Terraform file it's a blank Terraform let's just create it together so first thing we need to do is to create a lambda and then push the lambda into AWS because it's going to reference the lambda when we do the API gateway so before we do the lambda let's just do some trick here let's do the compilation of the lambda inside our Terraform so every time we run the Terraform it already compiles in case you forget so it's a nice thing to have just an idea that I had recently so we can just compile the code this is how you can do it so there is a resource called just new resource that you can run any command locally and because I'm on Mac this is how I'm compiling the code remember to update the the location of your files because now we are inside Terraform and then we have to go back to one folder go back one folder in order to access the lambda and the target file and instead of uh, zipping the file manually I'm gonna zip it here as well so we can do that using Terraform you can just zip the file so this is my target file my binary after compilation and I'm zipping just this file and this is my output path now let's define the lambda so this is just remembering this is how you can put the lambda and push it to AWS so your function name whatever name you want your handler is basically your binary runtime will be go 1.x role you have to put the area of your role here later and then uh, I also upgraded my Terraform I'm using the latest one right now so I'm, I'm gonna use a different way to reference those files so we don't need to use those uh, extrapolation which is kind of duplicated so we're gonna use this way now so just access your data and your archive file zip and then my output path which is this reference here and then for the source code hash same thing the zip file and we have this property here and the memory size timeout and also we need to set the permission for this lambda in order to be triggered by the API gateway and this is how you can do it so your statement ID is allow API gateway invocation action will be to invoke your function and your function will be this and that's it for my lambda so now let's do the magic of the API gateway and because we're using the API gateway to do a REST call so the first thing we need to do is to create the API gateway REST call itself so resource API gateway REST API whatever name you want for it just give it a name this will be in the definition so after we execute and deploy everything we're gonna go back to the console just to make sure that all the resources are there our lambda and our definition in your API gateway the type needs to be the types needs to be regional for this case now that we have our API gateway created we need to create a resource inside our API gateway and let's call it just person because we're sending a first name and last name so API gateway resource person is the name and my path also when it constructs the URL to access that lambda and uh, you need to reference the ID of your API uh, of your REST API ID and your parent 
which is the root resource ID. Now that we have the resource created, let's create the post definition to access that resource. AWS API Gateway method, and then you, I'm just calling it post, and uh, the HTTP method will be post, authorization none, API required false, and then you need to reference the API ID, API, REST API ID, and your resource ID that you just created. So this will be a post to this resource inside this API gateway. And this post, what it needs to do is it needs to trigger the LAM that we just created. So this integration here is going to integrate your post method with your LAM that it just created. So API gateway integration, I'm just going to call it integration, REST API ID, this is what I need, same as before, resource ID, same as before, HTTP method, HTTP method of my gateway method, which is the post, integration HTTP method post, and this type here, this is very important. This is where we are setting to use the AWS proxy. So remember that when we were in the Lambda, we were using the SEA API Gateway proxy. So this will help receive the parameters from the GET and POST using this proxy. So this is very important to set the type as the AWS proxy for our case. And the URI is going to be the URI ARN to invoke the Lambda. So this will come from the Lambda that you just created. Flavio test API gateway. Flavio test API gateway. And then there is a invoke ARN. And this is what we need to set in this URI here. So this is everything we need to do for the post. And now let's just set the get. So for the get is very similar to the post. We just need to find to define the gateway method. And we're defining the gateway method same as the post. And I'm calling it get. I'm setting it here. Let me just update those ones here. HTTP method now I'm using get instead of post. And then no authorization and no API key required. And the same as the post, I need to do the integration for it. So I'm integrating the get. I'm calling just integration get. I need to update those variables. And then, not sure why I need to set the integration as post, but this is how I've done it in the past and it works. So let's keep this way. And the type, of course, needs to be AWS proxy. And the URI is the same URI of our Lambda, because our Lambda is handling both GET and POST. We could uh, point it to a different Lambda here if we want. OK, this is everything we need to do to create the API gateway and define the integration between the, the request and the Lambda. And now the only thing that, uh, the last thing that we need to do is to deploy that. Because in, once you create it, you can deploy it to multiple environments. And then we need to deploy this API gateway in here. So let's just define the deployment part. And based on the documentation from Terraform, you need to define your gateway deployment. I just call it deployment1. I need to reference my REST API ID and the trigger this is important because in case you need to redeploy it which normally you don't need to redeploy if you just update the lambda it's just more for a configuration but in case something changes in your uh, the, the whole body of let's say my API gateway if I change any structure in here then it's gonna trigger the redeployment but if that happens you can also uh, do Terraform destroy and then do Terraform apply again to recreate but it, just for uh, to make it easier, it triggers the redeployment based on this condition in here. I also added the dependence on the integration. 
of my gateway integration and lifecycle create before destroy. And for the stage, I just call it dev, which is the variable that I've created before, which is my profile. It's going to be dev01. This is going to be the name of the, the stage. So this the, the name of the stage is going to be part of the URL after the deployment. So let's also update those variables here to remove that uh, warning from Terraform and this should be all you need to do for the deployment part but once it deploys you don't know exactly what is the URL unless you go to the console so let's just print out the URL from here because we can actually know the URL based on all the information that's in here so let's output what is my invocation invoke you ARN the stage name and the path part that I got from the resource and this is all the information this is all the three parts that's gonna construct the URL and just to make it easier let's just build the whole URL in here based on those information so you're gonna have a nice full path showed after you run the Terraform so it's just basically the invoke URL concatenated with the stage name slash what is your path for your for your resource which is person in our case so this should be everything for the terraform so now let's just go back to our uh, shell script and try to run and deploy this thing let's go to terraform and then do, let's do terraform so this is the version I'm using right now so this is the latest that I downloaded recently so let's just gonna use this one and do init terraform init so now let's do the terraform apply so it added 11 resources so this is the output that I created so this is the invocation URL so this will be the URL that we need to put in the back in our HTML and this is the URL that's going to be used for both post and get and let's just update it right now so my URL is in here now let's go to AWS console and make sure that the API gateway and the lambda was created fine my AWS console let's check the API gateway and see if everything was created fine yes Test Live API Gateway, that's the name of it. The ID, it's auto generated. So it generated this ID here, which is part of the URL, if you notice. Yeah, and then this is the name of your stage, and this is the name of your resource. So let's go inside. Uh, protocol is REST, endpoint, regional, as we created in our uh, Terraform. So as you can see here, this is the person resource that we created and we added two methods, the get and the post. So the get is lambda proxy integration. It's going to end up in my lambda. So let's click in here, lambda function, use lambda proxy integration, name of your lambda. And if you click on post, it's basically the same configuration, use the lambda proxy, ends up in the same lambda, and it's in here. If you click here on stages, this is the name of the stage that we created for the deployment. If you expand this, we have deployed the, the person resource with the get and post. So if you click here in the get and post, you can also see the invocation URL which is exactly the one that we built from Terraform so just in case you want to double check that is correct and it didn't miss anything alright so let's just check our lambda is created properly so yes Flavio test API gateway configuration is in here it's a Golang 
and the handler is the name of our binary. Now let's open the HTML page. You can open it locally or you can open it in, in, in S3. We're going to do the S3 later. So right now I'm just opening it locally. This is first name, last name. Let's say I'm going to do John Smith and then I'm going to send the pull. Uh, I'm going to do a send a, a get request. So I'm logging here. This is the URL that I called. I constructed it. First name equals John, last name Smith. This is the log object, and this is what's returned. Hello from Lambda, and then I concatenated first name and last name. And this was a get request. So now let's do Adam family and do a post on this one. So it returns the same object. I mean, same structure of the object, concatenating those two. And the, if you see here from the logs, it posts this. And this is the object that we turn. So everything looks good. Our Lambda is good. So now let's go to S3 in our console, create an S3 bucket, put the HTML page in there, and open from there instead of opening from our local file. S3. Let's create a new bucket. Flavio API Gateway. I'm going to leave it everything as default. Create bucket. Let's create a folder in here. Home. Put home here. Let's upload the index HTML. Index HTML, upload. And of course, if you have JavaScript files, CSS, image, you just upload all of them. Okay. Uploading successful. So here is my file. I try to open it. It's not going to work. Access denied. So what you can do is go to your properties, permissions of your bucket, your properties, here, static web hosting. Edit this part, enable, host a static website, yes, index HTML here, go to permissions, this is all blocked right now, you need to change that, don't block anything, because this will be open to public. Okay, let's try again. Nope, still doesn't work. So let's do this. Click here, actions, make public. Make public. That's it. Let's try again. There we go. Now it works. John Smith. Get works fine. Post works fine. And this is how you can host your HTML page in an S3 bucket. Just make sure that you change those permissions and make it public. But of course, make sure that you don't have anything sensitive in there because now it's open to the public. 
and the JavaScript is the one that is going to do the bridge and call the API gateway. So thank you very much for watching this and uh, see you next time.